So we've got a lot of different trees and sometimes you can identify them just by their bark, but the beech tree is usually an easy one to identify, particularly in the winter because they tend to hold on to their leaves. Uh, you can hear them rustling and the branches, the way they come out off the very smooth bark. Unlike most of the other trees, the bark stays smooth even through maturity with these. There's some pretty distinct deer tracks here, you can see that. Oh yeah. That is a pretty busy deer trail. So I think this is where the fisher came through. Um, they're distinct in having five toes. Oh yeah, look at and that. the footprints kind of overlap mm -hmm. front and back. Uh, There's a lot of squirrel activity here around this tree. See how smooth the snow is here versus the number of little squirrel prints here. Wow, that yeah. that is crazy. Oh, look yeah. at this huge hole on the side here. Yeah, look at this one. And uh, you can see are these squirrel been, nests? You think? Uh, those are woodpecker holes, but somebody may be using them. But you can see they've been taking oh, yeah. pine cones to eat the They're eating the seeds, seeds of, out of them. pine pine nuts. So. What did you find? Really? Um, and because it just snowed and that dirt was on top of it, it's something that's pretty active, I'm guessing. Not really sure who lives there. And I see you're holding the dog so that she doesn't go dig. I'm going to come and... It's something small, but it's certainly something burrowing. And I don't know if that's... It could be any of a number of things. Oh, if weasels or minks tend to burrow holes. Hmm. Interesting. But we don't see many holes like that during the winter months. Gia is very interesting. So right here is more of a pine cone that's been eaten with, what have you got up here? Lots of oh. those little footprints around it. Those are adorable. What'd you find? Uh, another burrow with a, uh, probably a squirrel or chipmunk. Probably a chipmunk. You can see there's half a, uh, acorn. Oh, yeah. That's outside. Very cute. Lots of little footprints in the snow outside this den, which is also covered with pine cone droppings. And the tracks that are all together clump and then they jump in a clump and they jump in a clump are squirrel tracks. Please. Sometimes if you're lost in the woods you can tell north from south uh, at least in this area based on moss growing on the north side of the trees uh, which doesn't get the sun most of the time so see if there's some more pale side here and then if you go around to this side here you'll see it's mossy. Oh it's mossy. Look at that. So this is a great example of a tree that's had some woodpecker action. Um, we've got several different types of woodpeckers in this area. The biggest ones are the pileated woodpeckers, and they're the ones who make these enormous holes. Um, this is an old dead pine, and it's had pine borers in it. You can see where the grubs have come out. And the woodpeckers will come up to the side of the tree, and uh, they'll actually listen for grubs and things inside it uh, to figure out where they want to go uh, where they want to go excavating. So we're here in the very back of our property at the Cadian Stream and beaver activity is always around water of course because they live in water and uh, you can see kind of right here over my shoulder across the river is the base of a very large tree that they've uh, done a lot of damage to to try and bring it down. And it looks like it's perfectly positioned to fall right across the river, which will do you know two things for them. It will help them flood out the area by creating a dam in the river with that tree. And then they also use that to build their dens. Um, if they have more water, then they have more habitat. Well, here's a pretty good sized tree that the beavers have taken down. Let's see here. Wow, look at that. Yeah, they've been really active. You can see it was probably a, I don't know, 40, 50 foot tree before they took it down. Um, sometimes they get them into the river and sometimes they don't. Oh my God, I just found the coolest thing. Look at this.
These look like antlers to me. And what's happening here, you think? Uh, looks like somebody's been chewing on that. <gasps> it is. It's literally an antler. Look Jeez, at that. Jeez, and she is very interesting. That is really cool. Look. Oh, my God. See, you really just never know what you're going to find on a walk in the woods. We just came back from our walk in the woods, and the dog is not tired at all, obviously. And I've got my antler that I found. Um, but we thought it would be good to remind you, if you are going to go out and take a walk, you know, even if it's on your own street, dress appropriately. Check the weather forecast. Make sure you've got hats and mittens and gloves. Wear layers, that kind of thing. If you're going into the woods or on a trail system, make sure you take some poles with you so you don't lose your balance. You definitely want to have a charged cell phone, maybe a protein bar in your pocket. Uh, a whistle is a great idea to bring as well. And hand warmers wouldn't be a bad idea. It certainly gets cold in Maine. And by all means, take a buddy. Right now, you probably have to wear a mask depending on where you're going. We're just in our yard, so we don't need one. But the best thing you can do is get outside, accrue some steps, and stay healthy, enjoy the outdoors, and take a look around. You never know what you're gonna find.